Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is your Team Bomb OG, Season 4, Episode 3, Little Starburst. Let's jump on into it, y'all, but I ain't gonna spend too much long. It wasn't worth a while, but I'm gonna go ahead and do what I got to do. Um, So we start the episode off with Pharaoh. Find out she want to move to San Diego all of a sudden. I think the main fucking reason she want to move to San Diego to all of a damn fucking sudden because she got a new animal, meaning she got a damn, did that a pony or a horse or what is that, a pony? I think that's a pony. So, you're moving to San Diego and your friend came over and you telling your friends that your social media been buzzing and your neighbor been buzzing about you got this new horse or pony, and you wondering why they talking? It's very obvious to me why they talking. You got a fucking pony in a goddamn residential neighborhood. That's country shit. So if you accept somebody to have in the country, or better yet, somebody that like live in the town, like the country or whatever. That ain't for no city folks. Name any place in America that's residential or local, better yet, any part of the United States where you see somebody in the city. Because it looks like you stay in the city. It don't look like you stay in no fucking country. Your yard don't scream country to me. You got a goddamn pony or horse with up with the fuck it is. So now your neighbor's buzzing and you don't like it. Talking about they need to mind their own fucking business. Um, no, bitch. If I was your neighbor, you damn straight. If I can get you in trouble, I'm going to get you in fucking trouble. That means if I have to have the pony go to a better home, better than the house, you giving it to your damn straight. I'm going to fucking do it. Fair, I don't know if you lost your mind or you trying to... I guess trying to make your daughter happier than your mom and your dad made you or you trying to buy her love or what the fuck you doing, but I could have thought of more thousand and one reason other than getting her damn or getting her goddamn horse, putting it in the goddamn backyard, the small backyard that I may add that look crowded as fuck, and you had your friend over there. My neighbors out here freaking out because I got a pony. Come on in the backyard and show me. Do you see this? Do you see a pony back here? You see a pony. You happen to look, you don't see it. Then you happen to point out, oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, that's fine and all. You got a pony. Y'all understand your gate gated in. You got one of those privacy gates. Hun. Horses shit. And they shit a lot. Matter of fact, they shit more than the goddamn horse. I mean, more than the goddamn dog, cat, hell, a pig. Basically, any other Emma out there, they shit ten times more. Have you ever met a horse or a pony when they go to the bathroom? It don't be little droplets like Dowsy. That shit be a whole bunch of horse shit. Who in their right mind in the city, in their neighborhood, happen to go outside? Oh, it's a nice, beautiful day. I want to go outside and get a tan or whatnot. Or I got some clothes out there air drying it. I got in my pool or whatnot. Who want to open their goddamn back door, open their window, have the air conditioning on? Better yet. Um, better yet, go to the front of their house, go into their car, and smell, try to smell a stank ass, um, horse shit coming over your fence, coming the wind blowing, hitting their damn nose. Don't nobody want to smell that horse or pony bullshit, but you. Hell, I'm pretty sure when you get tired of smelling it, you going to get rid of that horse. And good luck taking care of nigga. Them, the ponies and horses, they they require a lot of high maintenance. So good luck taking care of that horse, making sure it's fed right, making sure it's up on its shots. 
yeah, that's a lot of work, and I don't see you doing half of the damn work with that. But we gonna move on from that part. Um, what else happened with her? The horse. She told her daddy she was moving. Something before that. Oh yeah, and she happened to meet her friend and. Not her friend, her daddy, and she basically tell her daddy that I'm a brand new news to you that I'm moving. Your dad so you're moving to another part of Texas? No, I'm moving to San Diego. Girl, you didn't move more than goddamn. What's this up with you with all this damn moving? First, it was your first day. Then I think you moved to Texas. Then I think you moved to another part of Texas. California, Texas. And I think you going back. I think this shows fourth or sixth or fifth time moving. How many times was one move? Yes, I know you want to, um... Yes, I know you want to open more business. But don't you think three is enough, boo? Hell, that smoothie company are enough. Should be enough to sit your ass down for a while and don't talk about no more damn company, but some damn reason you insist on wanting opening up more companies and you want to do more and I guess three ain't enough for you. One plus, them little two pluses, I guess three ain't enough for you. You want to open more damn business while well, God forever know why. Hell, you said you better have time to yourself. You better have time to yourself. And you say, also said you better sleeping or whatnot. So if you move to California, you plan on opening more businesses. Um, I guess you're going to say fuck sleep. And you just going to worry about your companies or... I'm confused, fell while you trying to open up all these goddamn businesses. And hell, then you talking about something. You want to... Move out there to open more companies. Okay, that's fine. You want to be an entrepreneur. You want to open up more. I understand all that. But damn, can you wait a year, six months, three months down the road to open up more companies? To make sure, like, like they said, and I ain't heard this several times, when people open new businesses. The first couple of months is basically your... You starting up. They said most companies after the six and seven month, they barely last or they getting shut down or what. I don't even think you've been to the six or seven month yet, the uh, month yet, or six months or six years, or however say they say along down the road, and you talk about opening up more companies. Damn, can you wait to your company that at least get old or at least get their foot settled in. I know they being successful. I know they making you money or whatnot. But how do you know you opening up more of those going to be successful? You might want to slow down on them. And then she talked to her dad about she moving. Her mama don't know. The mom came up. Basically, she getting her little tension about her mama. The dad say, you see me changing right? He say, yeah, I see you changing. It's just mom, she not changing. And that look, cry she like to do. And that little rant she like to get on like her mom ain't trying to change. Her mama doing this and that. And that's enough of them fair for my life. And I got to deal with her ass this Friday. That's enough for her for this damn episode. Then we get the tail end cop, the tail end. Tyler and Caitlin, and it's Nova's second birthday. Second, yeah, second birthday. They're trying to party train her. I think Butch or Tyler gave her a book shirt that was cute. And basically, they bought her a lot of prayers. And then somehow, oh, yeah, Tyler brought up the fact that he want another child, that he want a child this time, and he want to go for a boy this time. Caitlin also missed it about it. And she said she don't know how big she want her family to be or she don't know if she want another child or whatnot. So they don't know if they're going to go. And later on in the episode, you see them talk more about that. And basically, he's still on the board. 
Caitlyn Mama says she okay. Go ahead, have the have the next child. Tyler, of course, ready, but she on birth control. Call that birth control come out. She got to wait, think a couple of months or however long after you take. I don't know about the birth control stuff. So y'all gonna have to tell me about the birth control. But she gonna have to wait regardless of um, when the birth control come out. You got a waiting period, I guess, to whatever happened to stop you from having kids. You got to wait to that process over. Or, the medicine out or whatever it doing but stop you by having the kid, then they can try to have the kid or whatnot. So they still want to have the kid and basically that's all what happened to them. Now on to the main event. Um basically we get the Macy. We on Thanksgiving. Basically, Ryan want to take the child, take Bentley, not the child, want to take Bentley to Alabama to meet Ryan's dad side of the family. Cause Macy took him last year, and Ryan want to take him this year. And then we get into it about dad. Basically, they waiting for that. Macy asked about that, and she basically asked him, well, Bentley, um, you went to Texas with us last year, so do you want to go to us to Texas again, or do you want to go to Ryan to Alabama? Uh, of course, he said he want to go to Texas again. Of course, he said he want to go to Texas again, not um the Alabama with the C. Ryan dad family, side of the family. So, she waited to the last damn day. I guess she waited till they stopped harassing her. And that what kill me about you, Macy. Like, when it comes to you, you like the same one of Ryan and his antics. You lost me with the whole waiting thing. Like, once you got an answer and you see them texting you, you see the mom. I think the mom, you said the mom was texting you. Ryan was texting you, and we seen several episodes, several seasons, Ryan, mom, and dad, they like a mother and dad to you. If you got an answer for Bentley right away, why in the fuck did you wait so fucking long till the very last damn second? Tell he, I guess you got took it and couldn't take it no more. So then you decided to tell him after this. And he said, I still ain't got an answer. Or so I don't know if he coming to text with me or not. Then he texts you again. Then all of a sudden, you, nope, sorry. He can't go with you. Like, rude. Now, I see why he snapped at you, and you really didn't have no point to get mad at him, and all seriously, Macy, because you basically had the answer they've been waiting on. You basically waited and waited and sat on your, put your hands under your ass and sat on this answer, sat on this answer, waited, waited, and waited, I guess, so Ryan couldn't take it no more, and he decided to tell you about it. So then you decided, that then after the fact, I guess after you couldn't take the damn tip mention with the answer to their question, you decided that, okay, why you waiting so long? And then the point that you, nope, sorry, he going with me. You couldn't have said, I had asked, you couldn't say it like this. I had talked to Bentley. He said, he wanted to go with me besides you this this so he wanted to go with me again this this um this year, not you. I'm sorry he don't wanna go with you. And left it like that. A little nicer than that. That nope, sorry, he going with me. That was kinda rude and I snap at your ass too. After MTV leave out, they won't get a scene with me. And you got to stop bashing him on TV. We all know Ryan the asshole. We all know Ryan ain't spending time with Bentley. That probably why Bentley decision was so easy for him. Cause like Bentley said, I hope he don't get mad at me. 
Because he barely spent time with me, and I want to go with you. I don't want to go with him to see his family. I don't blame him. Ryan not doing his duties as a father and not being there like he should, then why the fuck would I want to go to Alabama with you and see my grandfather's side of the family when my dad better spend time with me and Taylor is more of a daddy to me than my actual father is. So I can see where Brittany coming from, but Macy, you could have answered that a little quicker and probably said it a little nicer. But I'm going to leave that alone. That that's your decision. And you wonder why he snapped at you via text message. Hell, I might have would have snapped at you too. And you probably would have explained to him why you said this. And why he ain't going. You might have would have got. You probably would have caught more bees with honey than other than with the vinegar. The way you said it. I be feels on top of the way too. So then we get the Amber and Leah and... Matt them. So basically they throwing Leah eight birthday party. Gary said the awkward as fuck cause they was planning. Ooh, excuse me. Leah, I mean Amber sitting up there playing and saying, like, can we put designs on the the um the table and can we decorate the table with you know like with the cloth and all that? Can we do all that or whatnot? Then he answered the questions. Gary up there all awkward as fuck. I'm the prize him. Thing, and of course the birthday party went out without the hitch. But before the birthday party, Gary had his concerns. But those concerns with the was, I think, no. He talked to his friend first. That's what happened. And what is... I'm finna get sidetracked again, but it's a good sidetrack. Why the fuck when y'all fuckers film for this show, y'all have y'all friends pumping information in y'all damn heads to make y'all look like dumbasses on camera? Like Gary Friend, he will wait out of fucking line. I see where he coming for as a father, but let Gary say this. Not you. You coming off as master, saying this, putting these thoughts in Gary's head, and got Gary gears turning now. Like, is they getting married? The drug thing. They about Matt's son. All this other bullshit that they already settled in squires. And the fact that you want to bring it back up and make it a fresh issue when it's really not a fresh issue. I was looking at you so I wasn't like wondering where the fuck you came from with your extra ass wanting to know all the information like Gary told you. Look, I don't want no problem. Me and, Leah, me and Amber good. I don't want no problem with you. I'm not bringing that up. That's not none of my business. And I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it go like that. But then we get to the birthday party. Gary brung up the the marriage. Is she getting married? Brung up is she gonna have a baby or have another baby? He brung up something else. I think I I think I didn't give a fuck after he brung up them two things. Basically, the boy that pumped your head for this information, you brung up the same shit and basically did the shit and not only mentioned the same shit he did, you brought up about the baby, about the marriage, and Leah was wondering where this fuck was this shit was coming from and wondering why the fuck are you answering these asking me these questions? That's none of your goddamn business. And oh yeah, he mentioned about Leah and Leah and Matt relationship and him. Um, Amber and, and if Amber and Matt break up right now, that would be another man out of Leah, my, Leah um, live. And he also brought up that fact, which is a good point. But still, Gary already addressed this. Why the fuck are you bringing it up? You lost me when you brought it up. When Gary already discussed this several times, twice over, and you bringing it up, why? Because you want to be messy? Cause you don't like Amber. Cause you trying to pump Gary for information and or trying to pump shit into Gary's head. 
why the fuck are you bringing up Storm? And I'm pretty sure you look at the show and Gary tell you every fucking thing. So you ought to know that Gary already said this, question her. He liked the questions, and you just trying to start shit, in my opinion. You trying to start some fuck shit between them that ain't really necessary, and you were way out of line. I wish Gary would have told you to shut the fuck up. Like, I don't understand that how these people bring their friends on him, let them put bugs in their ear, and then they take that bug and go run with it. Like, if I had a friend and they got a suggestion like that, or they telling me shit to tell somebody that they ain't got to deal with, I got to deal with. And if I ask them this question, I may get cussed out, I might get told off, or I might get sock punched, or kick in the head. What the fuck would I bring this up? And it's obvious that, like Leah said, like Leah, Amber said, why is he asking me about my marriage? Why he asking me about children? See, it was obvious to Amber that your friend put a bug in your fucking ear. Cause why the fuck would you bring that up? That's none of your goddamn business. And my opinion, that's none of your goddamn fucking business. And the fact that you bring it up, you are being messy because your messy ass friend put a bug in your ear. And I'll finish say something else. Oh, yeah. And he also said that. He also said that. Amber made a step in the right direction in his eyes. So hopefully he'll loosen the top, he'll loosen those screens when it comes to Amber. Maybe, maybe not. Only one can hope he'll loosen them screens and he'll get Amber more lead get Amber more leeway with Leah. Possibly. Maybe we can only hope. But Anyway, though, y'all, that was the episode. Um, let me know what y'all think about the episode. Leave your th comments in the um, leave your thoughts and concerns in the comment section. Uh, my social media will be down there too, and I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all day, night. Bye.